What's going on, YouTube? You already know it's back at a brand new video for you guys today. Um, I was requested to check out this video. It's called Top 10. This is from WatchMojo.com. Top 10 best horror movie endings of all time. I could name a few, but I can't think of it right off of my head right away. So we're just going to go ahead and check out this list, shall we? In about a three, two, one. Every great horror movie must be wrapped up with a truly great finale. Right. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best horror movie endings. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're not specifically looking at final big screen scenes that scared the bejesus out of us, as we've already got a video for that. Instead, uh -huh. we're focusing on iconic horror movie endings that shocked us, defined the horror genre, or left us talking about it for days Is that after Freddy? the fact. Yep. It's too late, Kruger. I know the secret now. As you may have guessed, a big spoiler alert is in order. Now let's turn down the lights, well, grab I've seen some popcorn, shiny, so. and explore horror mastery. <laughs> Number 10, Wreck. This 2007 Spanish horror film is criminally underrated, doing more for both the zombie genre and the found footage genre than most movies that came before and after it. Angela and Pablo oh find God. themselves locked in an apartment building with strange and violent tenants slowly picking off the residents one by one. While the thrills and carnage are exhilarating throughout, it's the final 15 minutes that leave viewers breathless and on the edge of their seats. <laughs> Ending okay. in a dark room in the apartment, with Patient Zero lurking in the shadows, shaky cam and darkness are used superbly this is some to make outlast, this truly Resident satisfying Evil type while returning on. zombie films to their horrifying glory. I knew it. Number 9, I'll get The dragged. Thing. You the only one who made it? The Thing surely stands out as one of the greatest horror movies of all time. And one of the ugliest damn with characters. Regards to body horror that stand the test of time over three Ugh. decades okay, later. Okay, A group of researchers at an Antarctic research station find a mysterious specimen that takes various human forms to pick off the characters one by one. Oh, I saw this clip. The true mastery lies in that the paranoia so disgusting. that any person could be the thing in disguise, with mounting suspicion up until the film's explosive climax. Did you kill us? Where were you, Charles? Two survivors emerge, and the ambience oozes distrust, while the score subtly racks tension levels up to 11. Equal parts satisfying and maddening, few horror films leave viewers discussing the outcome quite like this one. What do we do? Why don't we just wait here for a little while? Number eight, Saw. <clears throat> Saw was good. The Saw franchise you look like zero day lips on the about torture aspect in later installments, but the first movie managed to produce a gripping storyline that left viewers' jaws on the floor without. I forgot about that part. He had voodoo dolls and everything. Two men find themselves for. chained in a rundown really bathroom, with the off. dead corpse between them, sparking the first of many questions they attempt to answer before it's too late. The final sequence reveals mystery after mystery in rapid succession, until it's revealed the alleged corpse was actually the Jigsaw killer all along. Yep. There's a slow acting poison coursing through your system, which only I have the antidote for. As Jigsaw departs, epic music and expressions of despair are blasted upon the viewer, until we are effectively left with Adam in total darkness. Yeah, that shit. Game over. That's fucked up. Number seven. The Blair Witch Project. Dad, I'm so sorry. While Wreck may have breathed fresh air into the found footage genre, this film brought it to life, all for the price of $60,000. It follows three fictional students who set out to make a documentary on the Blair Witch that allegedly haunts the woods of Maryland. Once this is why I'm hesitant was about camping. To the abandoned house at the film's climax, heart rates collectively spiked as the unspeakable I'm a camp, I'm a camp happens, outside my backyard. Other than that, that's it. Mm -mm. Where is he? Where are you? The ending earns its spot due to visceral, realistic sensations that feel like a snuff film. As the godfather of found footage films, it has a climax that would make Michael and Don Vito Corleone wet their pants in fear. Oh dear. <laughs> 
Damn. Number six, the mist. We gave it a good shot. Nobody can say we didn't. Among all the criteria checked off for a memorable movie endings today, this one takes the cake for dramatic irony. Taking place largely in a local grocery store, David Disgusting. and his young son take refuge in the shop after a mysterious mist envelops the area. The mist is followed by terrifying, demonic creatures and plenty of grisly deaths. What the fuck is that? The survivors what kind of demonic come face ass to face spider with was their that? demise, Ooh. and David mercifully Hate shoots spiders. everyone, including his son, with the remaining bullets, though he doesn't have one to kill himself. As he prepares to meet his maker, the U.S. Army comes to the rescue, and David realizes that he has killed his son just minutes before he'd have been saved. Damn! It's gut-wrenching and tragic to the nth that degree, sucks. making us wish the filmmakers could have just given us a happy ending. Right. Happens every time. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Feeling better? Oh, I feel like I'm I ain't gonna lie to that. Was funny though the way this he just dragged her into the damn security door. Particularly during his final At the end of the first one, anyway. A Nightmare on Elm Street introduced the world to Freddy Krueger. But this shit had me fucked up when I was a kid. Who seeks vengeance for the his whole death thing. by murdering victims in their dreams. Nancy, the strong female lead, vanquishes Freddy once and for all, resulting in a dreamlike, happy ending. And that door that was is, not until blue the when the striped hood of a convertible car comes See? down and dread fills every inch of the screen. What's going on? Told you. Hey, hey I'm not doing it. Run! Viewers are thrown from relieved and content to anxious and terrified in a matter of seconds. I mean, he seconds. came through and dragged Finally, the shit out of her. the inevitable takes place in a fashion that would make the most stoic among us jump out of our pants. Bam. Ooh. Number four, he just Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> just oh my God, he's it. so much nicer, don't you think so, Angela? An ending that's memorable for both that door was its graphic though, nature okay. and shocking Ooh. revelation. Sleepaway Camp tells Ouch. the story of a traumatized young adult named Angela who survived an accident when she was younger that left several loved ones dead. Hurry, help me! Ugh. Please help me! She is forced to join a summer camp to help with her introversion, and various tormentors I never heard wind this up dead, before. suggesting a secret protector watching over Angela. The final reveal is a naked Angela holding her suitor, Paul's severed head. Oh, and Angela has a penis. She was a man in disguise all along. What the fuck? God, she's a boy. She look creepy as hell. Sensory overload that in shit the is most creepy. wickedly compelling fashion earns this a spot on our list with a final shot that's securely placed in nightmare banks for years to come. I bet we can find something interesting in the walk-in. You never know what you can find in there. Number three, The Sixth Sense. Why, Why do you say that like that? Why did you leave me? I didn't leave you. Is it the most famous movie twist oh, of all time? Oh, is this time? the one where I see it's dead people? It's certainly up there. Cole Sear is a troubled yep. child who claims to see dead people. A psychologist by the name of Dr. Malcolm Crow sets out to help Cole, and a compelling narrative and chilling encounters follow. Upon second viewing, the clues were everywhere. Dr. Malcolm was dead the entire time. The <laughs> Let me see. Oh, God. Its obviousness makes the reveal that much more astounding and placed young M. Night Shyamalan at the epicenter of Hollywood nearly overnight. The Sixth Sense proves that gore and constant thrills aren't required for a truly great horror movie. Just attention to detail, rounded characters, and a quality ending that's still being discussed decades later. What is it? It doesn't even hurt anymore. Number two, Carrie. I wouldn't let her go to Oh, that should have me traumatized too. All the, gone. the end especially. It's best we just go away for a while. The second Stephen King adaptation on our list centers on Carrie White, a high school outcast who is bullied to no end by her peers. Felt like an into outcast forging a, a friendship with school. popular classmates, she falls victim to a cruel prank at prom she and burns you to hell down with her psychic powers, which we forgot to mention until just now. A murder-suicide accident leaves Carrie six feet under, and another dreamlike sequence ensues. It's so obvious that this is built up to one final jump scare, but the scene is so technically masterful, it takes everyone by utter surprise. It sure did for me. 
as one of the greatest jump scares in movie history, it also serves as the perfect ending to an unsettling tale. It's all right. I'm here. I'm gonna have no dreams like Before that. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh Lord! Cabin in the world. Damn! All right. Yep. Ugh. Yep. That had me messed up. I'm like. Number one, Psycho. He feels a little chill. Can I bring him this blanket? Sure. We love our jump scares, but genuine horror transcends no, way back with this and one. truly gets under your skin long after the end credits. One of Alfred Hitchcock's greatest oh, I saw this a clip. serial like... killer to the silver screen with violence, twists, and narrative choices that had never been seen before. It's sad when a mother has to speak the words that condemn her own son. Ending with Norman Bates in police custody and the voice of his mom playing in his head, showing how truly psychotic Jason and type deranged shit. Norman is. Oh, they know I can't even move a finger, and I won't. I'll just sit here and be quiet. His stare, her voice, the fly, they all tap into a dark corner of the human psyche we wish to avoid at all costs. Psycho is you a think? rare film that will still be relevant 100 years after its release. The unnerving ending wins the top spot for this and much more. Why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Dude. Okay, that's just creepy. Uh, for me, I'm gonna have to, like, movies that I think had a pretty good e ending as far as horror movies, Um, even though it probably had me messed up in the head. After seeing this, I, I know I talk about this movie a lot, Um, Dead Silence. It was really good. Uh, I didn't expect for Jamie to die, and I mean, spoiler alert, I guess, for people who didn't see it, but I didn't expect for Jamie to die. Like, he survived everything else, okay? He survived uh, going in a little Raven's Fair place where Mary Shaw was at, being chased with by him. Well, they were him and uh, the officer was being chased by her. And, you know, she was just floating. That part scared the shit out of me. And then the music was, oh, you know how they do that. The damn hype-ass scenes and shit get all tense and whatnot. And, you know, he survived that. Because, you know, the police officer, I forgot what his name was, he, he didn't survive. He had fell over. He started screaming. So, obviously, if you scream with Mary Shaw is present, you're fucking dead. Uh, he survived that. Uh, he survived after seeing his wife dead on the bed. Like, dead to the bed, shall I say. Because she was literally sitting up there propped the way the doll was. Um, and everything else. Everything else. He survived this whole movie. He survived that nightmare he had seeing Mary Shaw in the curtains like this. That shit scared the hell out of me. Like, I'm telling you, that movie had me messed up as a child. I'll never forget it. But after all that, seeing his dad dead, he had, you know, like that. And to realize that his dad was dead this whole time, <laughs> that he was just a prop, that his stepmama had him all propped up like Jamie, you know, that whole thing. Because lo and behold, she was damn Mary Shaw. And she just looked at him and said, No. Who's the dummy? <laughs> that part had me messed up in that evil ass lamb. Shout out to both of them. Okay, shout out to Mary Shaw. One of my favorite horror movie characters. But yeah, he was dead to the bed. And they had him all propped up like a puppet in the puppet book. It was him, his wife, uh, uh, Ed, well, not Eddie. Um, what, whatever the hell that damn police officer name was. Henry was up in there. Um, and obviously the mama was up in there, AKA Mary Shaw, just a new form. Cause you know, she came back and she did, like I said, she took out everybody and had something to do with her dying. She took out the whole, she wiped out the whole Raven's Fair pretty much. That shit is dark as hell when you think about it. Um, I wish they would have made a part two though. I guess it wouldn't make sense. Cause I guess like what, what else, who else would she take out? Cause I mean, I'm, I'm guessing she took out everybody. Like that's probably why they didn't make a part two. Cause I really wish they would have, but Oh well, but um, and I liked Freddy versus Jason ending. That shit was cold. They both died up in there, but um, Jason he came back like a G. 
I liked that part. He had head, uh, Freddie's head in his hand with his, you know, machete on the other side. And in that music, I like that part. The doom, 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 doom. You know they gotta have that hype ass music. I just love that part. It gave me chills. And then Freddie ass, he gonna wink at the end and shit. And uh, it's some other ones, but I can't think of them off, off the top of my head. Oh, definitely Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think the one that came out in 2006, I believe. Um, that was the first Texas Chainsaw I have ever seen. Uh, at during that time, like when he killed the last girl and shit, like in the car, and when she thought she was finna just escape, and he had ran that chain, like right through the chair, all her guts, she was just shivering and shaking, you know, all of that. And uh, he got out the car like it was nothing, like he just did a good deed, and he just walked the fuck off. And they had like, like had the uh, the little radio announcement or whatever on the uh, at the end of the movie and stuff, and like that shit really had me fuck the fuck up back in the day like when I first saw it I'm like okay I'm gonna go home and watch uh Rugrats before I go to bed because not to mention that was a school night too I said what why in the hell was I watching this but yeah those are some good movie endings that I appreciated in horror movies even though like I said they had me fuck the fuck up as a kid so obviously they did their job with these movies so but with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Comment below what some of your favorite horror movie endings from any movie that you uh, enjoyed. Horror movie, that is. Horror movie specifically. Um, as well as anything I can react to for you guys next. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in a minute. Taylor Rain, I'm out.